Ah, uh, welcome again. <clears throat> it's that time of the day when we must consider issues surrounding the business of the word of the Lord. Saying, tell my people to return to me. And you are welcome to today's edition of our State of the Union broadcast. The union between Jesus and his bride, the church. And so he has sent me to go tell his people to return to him. And we have, since inception, been looking at how, how we may have missed it, which may have necessitated the instruction, go tell my people to return to me. And so here we are, telling God's people to return. Tell my people to return to me. And so we have, in the past couple of days, today we go the third in this series in particular, we have been looking at scriptural accounts, scriptural accounts which suggest that the business of go tell my people to return to me is not new. The people of God have always given reason, given God reason to feel that way. And in this instance, we will or we have been taking our text from Romans chapter 1 starting to read from verse 18 and we started two days ago looking at Romans chapter 1 verse 18 all the way to verse 32 and as we have already said in previous editions of this series of broadcasts, there are several categories of deviation, if you like, highlighted in Romans chapter 1 from 18 to 32. And we will be looking at one category per day or per, per, per session, per episode of this series of broadcasts. So Romans chapter 1 from verse 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth of God in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God had, shown, had showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, bond in their lust one toward another, 
men with men, walking that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. And even as they did not like to, act, to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They have pleasure in them that do them. Now, two days ago, we looked at one dimension of this problem. It says in verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. The truth insofar as it is in reference to God is the person of Jesus Christ because Jesus himself said I am the way, the truth and the life so every time we refuse to hold the truth of God in the person or in the face of Jesus in righteousness then we offend and we have said who are the people who know the truth of God, you have to know it first of all before you can now hold it in unrighteousness. Who are the people who know the truth of God? The believer, the Christian, and back in the day, the Jew, the Israelite. Now the second position we took, which was yesterday, in yesterday's broadcast, it says from verse 19, because that because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God had showed it to them. Who are the people who have the revelation of God? Who are the people who know God? So the people we are talking about are not strangers to God. Or rather, they are not strangers to the knowledge of God. Now, who are these people who have the knowledge of God? Christians. So we are talking about Christians who have once come upon the platform and stepped back down or stepped away or became distracted or for some reason perhaps even became offended and so turned their face away from God. Now in today's take we go on to verse number 21 Romans chapter 1 verse 21 it says because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And if you want to continue reading, although we have reserved that for part four in this unpacking of Romans chapter 1, 18 to 32. Part 4 says, And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to a corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and to creeping things. But we will get to that one in our next broadcast tomorrow. But for today, he says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Who are the people who know God? Who are the people who are in a position to glorify God as God? Who are the people who even, who it has even crossed their radar to be thankful to God? Do you hear a non-believer saying thank you to God he doesn't know? So clearly, once again, this is a reference to Christians. So we begin to understand why God says, tell my people to return to me. 
They knew God, yes, but they glorified him not as God. That is, uh, neither were they thankful. Now, being unthankful is a straightforward matter. That's ingratitude. But let's look at the business of that they glorified God not. They glorified him not as God. What does that mean? What does it mean to glorify God? Now, in John chapter 2, we are told that after Jesus turned water to wine, the Bible says that in this manner, he began to reveal his glory. In something supernatural which he did, he began to reveal his glory, his nature, his person. He began to reveal himself. He began to unveil himself. Now, the word glory, or if you like, the glory of God, is a reference to all that God is and all that he has. By turning water to wine, Jesus began to reveal his identity. He began to show forth who he really was. Now, in Acts chapter 2, verse 22, we know, because, or with the benefit of hindsight, the Bible says, in Acts 2, 22, the Bible says, that you men of Israel, you know how that God accredited Jesus to yourselves in the miracle signs and wonders which he did through him. In other words, God was introducing himself in the person of Jesus to the Jews by the supernatural things he did. He was unpacking himself. He was letting him see himself in Jesus by the supernatural acts. So we understand that God reveals himself in that which he does, or in fact in that which he says. So when God gives us a revelation, for example, in his word, it is a manifestation of his glory. When God does something, like a miracle or a sign or a wonder, it's a revelation of who he is. He is unveiling himself. He's revealing his glory. He's revealing who he is. Now, it says that because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And I said, what does that mean? To glorify God means to ascribe to him that which he has done. Now that may be in the form of thanksgiving, or it may be just in the mere ad admission, the mere testimony, or testifying, or witnessing to the fact that he did whatever is in question. We ascribe to him his works. We we, we celebrate him in his works, in that which he has done, whether in word or in actually in deed. He says, when they knew God. So these are not strangers to God. They know God. And therefore, they know what he is capable of doing. But rather than declare that the works belong to God, they choose not to. And in choosing not to, they do something else, which is even worse than choosing not to. They ascribe the works of God to somebody else or to something else. In tomorrow's broadcast, we will see, for example, in Exodus chapter 32, that the children of Israel ascribed God's glory to the molten calf. And pointed at the molten calf and said, this be the God that brought us out of Israel, out of Egypt. They gave his glory to something else. I'll get back to reading that portion of the Bible. But let me quickly say this. <clears throat> In Ephesians chapter 2, we read it from verse 5 all the way to verse 9. It says, Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and had raised us up together and made us 
sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. He says we are his workmanship. We were made by God. Now, God made us in Christ. How can you then ascribe to yourself whatever you do? Whatever you manage to, as it were, achieve in the physical. How can you beat your chest and say, I did such and such? When the Bible clearly says that we are his workmanship. It's just like a slave boasting that he has property. Isn't that foolhardy? I'm aware that the Yoruba people have a proverb which says that the owner of the slave is the owner of the property the slave has. Or put more succinctly, the owner of the slave is the owner of the... What do you call it? The, the owner of the baggage which the slave is carrying. So don't don't so 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 slaves as we know cannot own property. Why? By the very nature of slavery, the slave belongs to somebody else. So whatever is due the slave is really the property of the, the slave master or the slave owner. So now he says we are his by the same principle, he says we are his workmanship. So alright, I'm looking at the fan. Now imagine the fan is boasting, oh, I rotate very well. I know how to rotate. I rotate uh, clockwise, not anti-clockwise. When I rotate, I can go at certain speeds and I can read. Now imagine the fan making such a boast in the presence of the manufacturer of the fan. You are refusing to ascribe the glory where it is due. He says, when they knew God, they refused to ascribe glory to him. Now, we read from Ephesians chapter 2 now, from 5 to, to 10. It actually says that we were saved by grace, through faith, and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Insofar as you are in Christ, whatever you are or whatever you manage to think that you achieve you were first positioned to be able to do that by the one who saved you it is not of ourselves he says it is not of works lest any man should boast in boasting we ascribe to ourselves the works which pertain to us. And when you boast, you are actually telling your hearer and God that you can help yourself. That's one. You are telling God you can help yourself. You are telling your hearer that you can help yourself. And then more painfully, you are telling your hearer and you are telling God that you don't need God. And you know that's a violation of scripture right there. Because Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And then Jesus himself didn't even make the mistake of ascribing anything to himself. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. So why then do we boast? Now, in boasting, I said... You are telling your hearer and you are telling God that you don't need God. That you can do it yourself. You are telling God that you can help yourself. So you don't need his help. But more painfully, in boasting, you do 
another set of two things. In boasting, you deny God gratitude due him. And then you deny him glory due, his, due him for his works. I'll say that again. In boasting, you deny God gratitude and glory due him for his works. Now, if you were God and somebody was bragging about something that you did through him or if you like helped him to do, what would be your reaction? You probably wait for next time and let him do it, do it again by himself. Or perhaps right there as he is boasting, you step away from the walk because it was done by your power. You step away and let the elements destroy what the man says he has done and let him fix it. Now I'm, I'm thinking that as a man. But you see, every time we refuse to give God glory for that which he has done, we set ourselves up for what Romans chapter 1 from verse 18 to 32 speaks of. And I'll read that portion so that we can move forward. Romans 1 21. It says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, it says they became fools. Verse 24, it says, For this reason, God gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Because they would not give glory to God, because they would not ascribe to God that which he had done, he stepped away and let, and let them dishonor themselves in misusing their bodies between themselves. And so, according to scripture, that is how that funny business started. Of man to man and woman to woman. That's right there where how it started. In refusing to give glory to God, the creator, as the one who created you the way you are. In refusing to be thankful to him for that which he had done in your case. God stepped away. Okay, if you made yourself, then use your body for however you choose, since you made yourself. And those people who thought that they were wise, not knowing that they had become fools, they began to dishonor their body between themselves. I won't dwell on that today. That's for a later broadcast. But the truth of the matter is, because they knew God, he said because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. I want to imagine for a minute a Christian manages to win some kind of contract business. He executes it successfully and he gets paid and then he makes some money. And then he begins to say to himself, that it was his smartness, his astuteness, his experience in business that did all that. Yet the Bible says that God is the one who gives us power to get wealth. He gave you the two hands which you used, he gave you the two legs which you used, he gave you the brain which you used in your astuteness to do whatever you thought you did and now you say I am my, I'm a made man I did it by myself that's what we are examining today that because when they knew God they glorified him not as God they refused to ascribe to God that which God had done for them Ephesians 2 verse 10 says we are the workmanship of God so long as you claim to be a Christian, you are the workmanship of God. God is working in you 
to produce whatever it is, just as he was working in Christ. So when we begin to make the mistake to think that we are okay by ourselves, then we forget, we start to forget to be thankful to God. That's when we start to talk like ordinary men. That's when you stop hearing God or Christ in the man's sentence. Now he's trying to talk like everybody else, minus God art. So he begins to talk as if his wisdom achieved whatever he has achieved for him. And it is in this vein that some are saying, about, I'm talking now about Titan, and they are saying it is not necessary. Praise God. In the same vein that it is not necessary, you will soon cross over to there is no need to be thankful to God. You know why? Those who were commanded to tithe, they were told, or it was explained. I'm not talking about Abraham yet, and I won't. In tithing, they were bringing honor to God because of what he had helped them to achieve. It was a way of honoring God. But I didn't come to talk about Titan. I came to talk about Christians who refuse to glorify God, who refuse to ascribe to God that which he has done. It is to such that he says today, to tell my people to return to me. And perhaps you are this person. You have been talking as if you are all by yourself and you are supposed to be a Christian. You speak like an ordinary man and so you boast. Effectively, you boast. You talk and sound like it's all up to you. It's according to your effort. You were saved by the grace of God. Not because you did anything to warrant or merit it, but God did it out of his love. And he says, it was not of ourselves, it's the gift of God. So God has given you life in Christ. Now you boast that the life is yours. Is that so? Where God says to tell you to return to him. Return to him. Return to him in honoring him in his glory and in his gratitude. In the name of Jesus. We will continue with this line of thought from Romans chapter 1, 18 to 32. We will examine another dimension of how we may have walked away from God. We will do this same time tomorrow. But we must stop now. And until then, stay blessed. Stay blessed. Staying under the banner of the glory of God. See you again.